what we are particularly interested in is a simpler version of the current process network which is sometimes called static data flow right now in data flow what happens is that i do not have the conditional behavior that i talked about earlier right i assume that there are basically no conditionals present anywhere in the uh, logic all the behavior is completely static meaning that it is known ahead of time right every single functional block every process every node in my graph has some behavior that i know ahead of time i know that every time it is going to execute it needs to consume a certain amount of data from its inputs and will finally produce data on its outputs right that terminology in turn leads us to this thing called producer consumer relationships which basically tells us exactly what is the relationship between the amount of data being consumed by each processing element and what it produces okay so like i said this is a slightly simplified version of kant process networks right and what it allows us to do is that you can do a lot of system level analysis right in particular you can analyze how big can buffers become how big of a buffer do you need between two particular elements to avoid any kind of issues such as you know uh, the buffer becoming full or any problems like that similarly is it possible for such a system to ever get deadlocked meaning that there are a whole bunch of processes sitting out there all waiting for each other right none of them is ready to go everyone is waiting for someone else can such a situation arise is something that can be analyzed nicely in static data flow okay. now there is one concept over here that i want to introduce it is a terminology which is something called iteration right and iteration sort of the di uh, dictionary definition is repeating something right the repetition of a process in our case every one of our functional units let's say a multiplier i can think of it as an iterative process what it means is every new sample that comes in what does it do it multiplies with a coefficient and produces an output what do adders do they basically take samples they add two values together generate an output on the other hand you know if i have a much more complex uh, function let's say the color space conversion for every image that comes in right it would take a complete image as input do the color space in, uh, conversion and generate a complete image as output that would be one iteration okay so in other words one complete sort of iteration through any node in a graph a data flow graph right the kind of things that we are trying to build up over here could generate one output of the system okay and ultimately what we are interested in is what does it require to perform one complete iteration of a complex graph and bring it back to the state where it can accept the next input okay now with all of this in mind what we can do is we can generate something called a static data flow graph corresponding to an fir filter right so this essentially would be corresponding to let's say our simple filter which was just a three tap filter right ax of n plus bx of n minus 1 plus cx of n minus 2 okay and you know it looks almost identical to the block diagram that we had earlier the primary difference that you can see is i now have you know a couple of things one is you remember we had this thing that each of these has to be a separate fifo channel right so every edge has to be a separate fifo channel between a pair of nodes because of that i can't really have the kind of structure where you know i said i have a delay element and another delay element on this and i take sort of an intermediate branch out here right this is not permitted in this structure which is why i have two separate edges over here one going from s to m1 and another one going from s to m2 right i treat them as two separate fifo channels was that really necessary probably not in practice i won't implement it this way but it allows me to do some kind of analysis of this okay and of course the registers themselves have now been replaced by the letter t right so we have this t element over here and 2d over here right so what does the d indicate the reason why i am replacing it with d rather than the rectangle indicating a register is to make it clear that 
we are no longer talking about a physical register at this point. Right? This D element simply indicates that there is a one sample delay between S and M1. Right? In other words, whatever is generated out of S at some point will have to go into some kind of a FIFO buffer and will be consumed by M1 effectively one sample interval later. Okay. Similarly, whatever is produced by S will go and sit on another FIFO buffer and will be consumed by M2 two sample delays later. Right? Because there are two data points already present in the FIFO buffer ahead of whatever was generated by S at this point. There, we can generalize this concept of static data flow. There is nothing to fundamentally say that you know uh, only one sample should be produced or consumed every time. I could also have a situation where every time that A fires, one sample is produced on the output channel, but B actually requires two samples in order to fire, two inputs required. Right? Every time that I want to fire B even once, that is to, the term fire uh, in this case basically means execute or do whatever operation B is supposed to do, I need at least two inputs to have come from A. And in turn, what does B do? It does all its processing and produces three outputs. Every time that it fires. Okay. So A, in other words, is a source. It can fire at any time. And every time it fires, it produces one output token. B consumes two tokens on firing and produces three tokens as output. C finally is a sink. Every time it fires, it basically consumes one token and removes something from the FIFO buffer. Okay. So now with all of this in mind, we can think of something called firing sequences, right? which allows us to reason about what are the properties of this entire data flow graph that we are trying to construct. right? What is it that will return this data flow graph to the original state and what is the sort of period with which I can bring it back to its original state. What is it that is required in order to, what would be the time required in order to bring it back to its original state and you know allow it to sort of repeat the iterations and so on. Lots of thing, questions of that sort can now be understood. For that first we have to understand something called firing sequences. Now I am showing one particular firing sequence over here. And what I have said is that there is a firing sequence called A, A, B, C, 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 right? So let's try and understand what that means. This firing sequence basically says that after the first time A, what will happen? I will produce one output over here, right? So this essentially corresponds to the first step. The second firing of A will produce one more token over here right after that the next thing that can happen is i will say it's the first firing of b right which will result in basically removing both of these right and producing three tokens as output here, right? Next comes what happens when C executes. The first time that C executes, it will pull out one value from here. The second time that C executes, it will pull out the second value from here. And the third time that C executes, it will pull out the third value from Q, right? Which means that effectively by the end of this sequence, what I will have is, once again, I would have come back to the same state, right? So in other words, if I look at this, after the first firing, what I'll have is, there will be one token here. After the second one, there will be two tokens. After B fires, 
it will take out the two tokens from its input and produce three tokens on the output and then after each of the all three of these i'll once again end up back at the original state right where there are no tokens present on any of these three four channels okay so this is an example of a firing sequence in a general data flow graph okay we'll stop here for now in the next class what we are going to do is go through some more firing sequence examples and eventually sort of get to the next stage what, what is the purpose of this why are we trying to understand all of this how does it relate to the analysis of actual larger data flow graphs right and what can i do with it in terms of analyzing the timing behavior of such graphs okay so like i said the next class is going to be on uh, friday at 4 pm not at 5:30 and if there are any other questions related to the quizzes or anything else uh, on moodle please let me know by email so sort of one question uh, can you visualize fire as a clock clock edge or something uh, that's a good question it's better not to think in terms of uh, you know a, a firing of a node as a clock edge for the reason that i told you earlier right because one firing of a node uh could actually result in a large amount of computation happening and in fact uh in practice what you will find is that you know every time that one node is fired it might actually result in a lot of work being done over multiple clock cycles the example that i gave in terms of color space conversion right i i would think of the entire color space conversion operation as one firing of that node okay so during that time what does it do it takes many clock cycles it reads in a value from some fifo channel does all of the computations required for the color space conversion writes all of the outputs at the end of it it says okay done that is one firing 